Hello, everybody, and welcome to... Oh, wait. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. And, um, yeah, we there's a lot of work that's happened this week. Uh, very happy with the progress that's being made on the uh, color refactoring. Uh, but I think it's about time that I talked about what the color refactoring means for you. Um, but before we get into that, I want to give a big shout, shout out and a big thank you for my sponsors. Um, if you don't know, my time on Inkscape is paid for by you, the users, who directly fund me to basically work on Inkscape to maintain it and to add features and to fix problems. Um, some news I had in is that uh, one of my big sponsors is moving their sponsorship to other projects next year. So unfortunately, my time is actually going to be reduced considerably in 2024. But my hope is that I'll be able to reach out to more Inkscape users that are interested, especially in the color management stuff, who want to see me continue this work um, and hopefully deliver it in a timely fashion, um, who will come on um, as sponsors and replace that time. So if you know somebody, or especially if you know a company who has been maybe thinking about sponsoring me but wasn't sure, this might be a great time uh, because I definitely want to keep up the momentum of being able to do this color stuff. And um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of work here, so hopefully with your help. Okay, let's get into the actual work then. So what I wanted to do is wanted to say, essentially, what has this color refactoring ever done for us? Like, why am I spending so much time doing this stuff? Um, and I broke it down into basically three areas to try and describe to you um, the benefits of doing this work. Firstly, let's look at features. This is the stuff that you're going to see most vibrantly, I would say. Um, first of all, the color selection, right? Uh, when you go in Inkscape and you select an object and you, and you set its fill and stroke color uh, using the fill and stroke di dialog, currently there are all of these tabs that basically allow you to set what method of selecting colors you're going to use. Um, that has no relation to the actual color that's saved on objects, right? That basically is a kind of lie. I mean, it's not, it's useful to the, the user, obviously but it doesn't actually describe what's going on in the SVG at all. It doesn't describe the data that gets saved or like how Inkscape can pull out that data when you reopen that file. Um, with this refactoring, a lot of that kind of goes away. Uh, there's a lot of complexity there about converting colors that isn't necessary. You basically just save the colors in whatever the thing is that you've selected. You know, you like HSL, say you select a color in HSL, that's what we save into the style, right? Um, there's also some other things to do with essentially making sure that the colors that we save are in the format that you selected right up until the very end when they're being rendered. Um, this basically allows the future rent renderers to be able to uh, use those colors more proactively. So a great example is uh, gradients. When we construct great gradients currently, because everything is in sRGB, we get banding that happens, especially in certain uh, contrasts. Um, but if you have access to the original data, uh, then you've got a much better chance of being able to render something out in linear RGB or HSL or some other for format which doesn't have that problem. Um, then you get things like uh, color droppers, right? So if you if you go in and you're using a CMYK document and you use the color dropper, it actually sets an RGB color, right? Because it's picking the color out of the screen the screen is or is in, in sRGB. In fact, everything is in sRGB in Inkscape currently. So it has no chance of being able to use the color drop dropper to basically use, uh, to, to set an ink color, right? Same thing for HSL, same thing for other things. You're, you're kind of limited. And there's a lot of tools like that that use colors like the, um, the tracer, uh, the clone tiler, uh, the flood tool, all of these tools, they, they use color to be able to detect boundaries and things. Currently, that's always in RGB. Uh, and this basically, what this means is because the colors are always in the format that you've selected right up until the very end when they're being used, um, that code can be improved and features can be expanded later on that allow it to just work better, um, especially if you're not using RGB. 
Okay, so the second section I wanted to get into was the SVG format itself. Now, for the longest time, uh, the uh, kind of SVG that Inkscape outputs, um, we want it to be compatible with the World Wide Web so that you can load it up in things like Firefox and it displays the graphic correctly. Um, the W3C, the, the body that produces the SVG st standard, have these things called color modules, and essentially they're basically extensions to uh, websites that allow you to define colors in lots of other color spaces. Um, this new work actually allows us to support all of that, not just reading it in, so we can read in your HSL, your CMYK, your RGB, whatever's, uh, all the new formats for CSS. We'll also be able to write those out. So if you're a person that uses Inkscape to produce web pages and those web pages are going to use HSL, for example, oh, that's hue, saturation, and lightness, sorry, um, then you'll actually be able to use Inkscape natively and you won't have to use some other tool to do some like weird conversion afterwards. Um, you, we can just save those val values out as well as read them in and n like it never has to touch a, an RGB hex code in between, right? Um, we, we, this also means that their SVG that we'll be able to produce will be more compatible, right? We'll just be supporting more of the standard that the uh, th that's possible out there. Okay, so that's the SVG. The third and final component is actually with the code. Uh, and this is more to do with maintainability. It's that uh, over the 20 years that Inkscape has existed, there's been hundreds of developers that have worked on Inkscape, and every time one of them wanted to do color work, uh, we tended to get a kind of, um, let's say a mess, it's not a mess. A lot of these developers are really good developers, but like uh, new implementations of the same code. So a lot of the code that I'm ripping out as I, as I do the refactoring is a lot of uh, duplication, right? It's a lot of ways in which code um, was trying to do the same thing over and over and over again. It was trying to write out uh, OGP hex codes and why not have 17 different parts of code that do the exact same thing. Um, and of course, because it was duplicating all of this code, a lot of that code was conditional, right? It basically would only work if it was in RGB. And as soon as you had an ICC profile, as soon as you uh, reference things in CCMYK, it could basically only choose one option, which is to use the backup or RGB color and completely ignore your CMYK, which is no good, right? Like the code needs to be able to be consistent. Uh, and future developers need to be uh, safe and secure in the fact that the API that I've created is uh, the color API. And there's no alternatives. There's no like, oh, I could just do a better job if I just did it myself. No, none of that. Um, the API that I've designed is designed to be structurally safe and obvious to use for developers, i.e. I've designed it or I'm thinking about design considerations. Um, to this end, there is a, a massive test suites. Uh, that Im should improve code maintainability and compatibility going for from, from forwards. Um, you've probably heard about some of the issues that Inkscape has, has had recently. A lot of that is to do with a lack of testing or a lack of, lack of automated testing. Um, and so like being able to write a lot of tests will definitely help. Um, and also I, I put the code in for review this week so that uh, some key developers who know how to do things like memory management can have a look at it and review what I've created because I, I absolutely want it to be sort of like the best of the best that we could do uh, as, a, as an entire project, right? Not just me as an individual, um, but like I, I wanted to make sure that if I'm gonna put on all, all this work and do all of this refactoring, then I might as well make it the best. Um, okay, so th those are the three areas about what this uh, color refactoring has ever done for us. I hope this explains some of the uh, the value that we have in it and uh, some of the reasons that I've decided to embark on this uh, quite strenuous uh, activity, I, I would say. I don't mind sh sharing with you that over the past few, few weeks, it's kind of driving me mad because it, you know how it, you like some easy wins or you like achievement? Well, there's not a lot to show here. It's just driving through the code and like refactoring it and changing it and updating it and improving it and um, figuring out how to do a lot of different things. So uh, I thank everybody who has been very kind in the comments and, and has been encouraging me uh, and just like, you know, helping me to um, keep on track and to keep motivated 
Um, and hopefully we'll get this done. Hopefully. Um, but I can see, I can definitely see why uh, other developers kind of said that mm, I should think about this as an entire year project because the scale of it is actually much bigger than I thought. Okay, thank you for joining me for this uh, update. Thank you to everybody that um, uh, liked the the uh, Advent calendar video last week. It was a lot of fun to make, and uh, the responses that, that I got were great. I would ask if people could share these videos more widely, that would be great. Uh, it seems that since I did the streaming for the 20th anniversary, the views have have taken a hit again. This and this happens on YouTube every time uh, you do a stream, and B YouTube seems to think that oh you've done a stream therefore like the next thing that you do is going to be another stream, and so your normal videos get a massive hit. They get like one third of their views removed. So if you can help with that by sharing, that would be uh, great. And um, yeah, hopefully I will see you all next week. Uh, thanks for joining me.